a geophysicist at the WSP in, in Denmark, and I'll be the presenter of this uh, webinar uh, today. I'm very delighted to see so many people joining us. Um, I'm heading a, a group of, of five geophysicists in Denmark, and uh, we are primarily working with the EM geophysics, uh, most, mostly ground-based, but also we have airborne projects as well as, uh, as uh, uh, borehole investigations. Um, I'll just turn off my camera while doing the rest of the, of the show. So, the um, topic for today is the, the TTEM, uh, geophysical mapping uh, of subsurface uh, geology. And the agenda looks like this. First, I'll uh, motivate the use of, uh, of geophysics, and then I will we'll move into the, the, the TTEM method. How does it actually work? And then I'll show a, a application example of uh, uh, in a project that we that we actually are working on uh, just now. Finally, there will be uh, a Q and A session. Uh, so, if you have any questions, please write them in the chat. And also, there will be a possibility of uh, downloading the, uh, the, the the presentations um, from from the, uh, the the panel. So, why use geophysics? Uh, the primary motivation is the fact that uh, many projects, at least that, that we deal with, uh, they they concern the subsurface, which, which in general is unknown. Um, so projects will often be based on assumptions on different scales uh, regarding the subsurface. And in my world, assumption often equals uncertainties and risks. If you look at the uh, two boreholes to, to the right, I mean, it's pretty obvious that there, this is a homogeneous uh, geology. We have some sand from the top, and then a clay layer, and some some sand uh, um, further down. Uh, and this is probably the kind of geology you will be thinking of uh, from from this uh, from these descriptions in boreholes. So there will you will have no worries in in accepting activities uh, on the surface. Uh, in, in, in this case. However, based on these uh, description of boreholes, the geology could also look like this. And this is precisely the reason why you should use uh, geophysics uh, before uh, doing any, any further actions in this project uh, to fill in the gaps between the boreholes to get wiser about how does the geology actually looks like in your project uh, area. Moving on to the uh, Subject for today, uh, the TTEM method. First, some facts. Um, TTEM is an abbreviation of Tow Transit Electromagnetic System. It's uh, developed uh, at the Hydrogeophysics Group at, the Unver at Aarhus University in Denmark. And nowadays, it's marketed by Aarhus Geo Instruments, which is a newly formed spin off company located also here in, in Aarhus. Two years ago, in the beginning of two 2020, uh, WSP in Denmark uh, was the first commercial company to actually acquire a TTEM system and to uh, to uh, offer services uh, on a commercial basis. Uh, now uh, there's about a dozen instruments uh, operating worldwide. Uh, however, mostly instruments are within the research uh, communities. When you see uh, in the bottom part of the screen, we see how the system actually looks like. Uh, we have this, the instrument positioned in front at the ATV, and the ATV tows two sledges, one with the uh, transmitter coil, uh, a four by two meter uh, um, coil, and last you see the receiver coil uh, towed uh, in the back. Uh, the system measures continuously while driving. We use a speed at about 15 kilometers an hour, often a little bit slower, but 15 to 20 kilometers an hour will go. It's very agile and highly maneuverable doing field work. It's actually possible to wherever you can move the, the ATV and, and you have the, the, the sledges behind it, you can also measure. It's easy deployable. You can see from the picture that we can fit all the system in the trailer. And the capacity is about 50 to 75 kilometers profile a day, uh, equals 100 to 150 hectares. Uh, when mapping with a 10 meter uh, behind uh, between each soundings and 25 meters separation of the uh, of the lines, depth of investigation the range of 60 to 80 meters, uh, but occasionally we also see depths to uh, more than 100 meters uh, in in uh, in our surveys. So how does it actually uh, work? It's um, 
and an uh, EM a time domain method. Uh, you recognize again this the transmitter call here, the trans sorry, the receiver call here, the transmitter loop here, and the instrumentation uh, uh, in the front at the ATV. Uh, the measuring starts by transmitting a current in the transmitter loop. It builds up a primary magnetic field uh, depicted by these uh, mag magnetic uh, field lines. And the, when shutting off the, uh, the current very abruptly, uh, this will uh, initiate um, subsurface eddy currents. Uh, they will move uh, downwards and outwards, uh, something like depicted in, the, in, in, this, in this illustration. And attached to these uh, eddy currents, there will be magnetic fields, of course. And the decay of these magnetic fields is, is the actual measurement being performed in the, uh, in the uh, receiver loop uh, toad in the back. Uh, and here's the actual system uh, working on, on, uh, on a survey. And on the, on the right hand side, you, you see the, uh, the uh, Picture that the operator sees while driving on the on the ATV. He can follow the position of the uh, of the uh, system, and he can always see the uh, also see the the quality of the uh, of the measurement. To the right, you see they actually uh, uh, disturbed measurement right now. It's because there is a, a metal fence uh, between the two uh, between the two fields here, and then he moves away from the from the uh, the metal fence, and you'll see how the the measurement actually gradually gets much better and, and smooth. The reason why you see two curves over here is that we actually transmit with, uh, with two moments. We have a low current uh, transmitting about three amps, uh, giving the, uh, the, um, this curve and transmitting 30 amps, uh, uh, resolving in, in this curve to the right. This picture also can be transmitted to, uh, to us in the office. So we can actually follow the measurements uh, real time and online. Uh, so we can do QAQC and we can see how the measurements involve in the, in the field while they're actually being done. And that's for a geophysicist really is a very, very nice feature. Uh, this, the TTEM results are produced in terms of uh, subsurface resistivity variations. And that means that uh, the translation into geology information is it has to be done afterwards. Uh, that transformation is not unique and it requires lo local geological uh, knowledge. And that means that every survey area, you have to have prior knowledge to how the geology, ge geology will look like. And you have to, to do some correlation with, with other means to be sure how the uh, geological um, uh, uh, structures will look like. These are so examples from, from Danish sediments. What you will, uh, will have to focus on is that in the blue colors, we have the, uh, we have the uh, low re resistivities uh, representing uh, clay and, and mud. In the middle with the uh, green and yellow colors, we will have something like the, uh, the, the moraine clay, we have some silts. Um, and in the uh, right hand side with the purple and, uh, and red colors uh, represent um, actually uh, groundwater aquifers at least in the uh, in the danish uh, environment so bear the co these uh, color schemes in in mind when you see the next uh, the next slides some takeaways about the uh, about the method um, we map uh, down to a depth of about 60 to 80 meters and when when driving uh, at the uh, at line separation of uh, 25 meters it actually gives almost a 3D subsurface data coverage. That's very nice. Um, an experienced crew map uh, up to about 150 hectares uh, in a day. The system is highly maneuverable, uh, as you uh, can imagine from, from, from the picture. Uh, it can even be mounted on rafts and towed on water. So it's, it's, uh, in, in that sense, it's very used also in other, in other settings. Uh, but uh, have to be in bear in mind that it's an EM method. So uh, it in inducts uh, currents in the ground, but it also can induct currents in, in cables and in met metallic structures. Uh, and you so have to take care not to measure too close to those. Uh, that means that uh, doing measurements in urban environments is not possible with, uh, with this method. Okay, I'll move on to an example where you can see some of the strengths uh, that, that, we, that we enjoy uh, with this method. 
Um, the project is uh, is from a, a public water supply in Katamine in the central part of Denmark. They are increasing. Uh, uh, they are experiencing increasing threats from pesticide uh, con contamination of the groundwater resource. And in the facility of uh, one of their production facilities, uh, they have seen traces of, uh, of pesticides. Moving in a little bit closer, these are the production wells attached to, to the water supply. Uh, There's one um, well filled up here, another well filled uh, down here. And one of the contaminated wells that we will be focusing on is uh, positioned uh, uh, down here. On the, responding to the client's wishes of, uh, of looking at the, the, the risk and, and how the aquifers actually are, are structured, we post a, um, a TTEM survey uh, with a size of, uh, of 175 hectares. Um, the, the terrain is mostly, mostly farmland, but you can see there's also some forest and some, some wetlands and, and marshes in the center of, of, the, of the area. Um, you see where the, uh, the data has been acquired, and, and this was covered within three days uh, and uh, an average uh, line spacing of, of 25 meters. In the rest of the, uh, of the presentation, I will focus on the, uh, on the top part of, of the area. Uh, I have shown the, uh, the general direction of, of groundwater flow in the area, and unfortunately, it corresponds very well for, from where the contaminated well is positioned, and, and the production well is just uh, downstream from, from that. So, showing some data, um, you see two uh, sections. The first section uh, in the top left is from northwest towards southeast, crossing the area. And uh, the other section in the, in the lower part is from southwest towards the northeast. Uh, here's the con contaminated whale well, and here are the, the well fields the, from the, and the production wells. You see the variations of the resistivity um, from um, 15 meter above sea level until 15 meter above sea level to 50 uh, meter below uh, sea level. Now you bear in mind uh, the, the, the color scheme I showed you before with the, uh, with, with the sediments and how, how they re reflect the resistivities in the Danish environment. Uh, and bearing this in mind, I have made a, uh, a interpretation of how the geology would look like based on, on, these, um, on these measurements. You notice the, uh, the, the, the moraine uh, on top, uh, more or less continuous uh, across the area and then sand layers, and then the deduvial sand in the, in, in the central part here, also depicted on the, on, on the lower uh, profile. That actually is the, uh, the primary uh, aquifer that, the, uh, that is used at the production wells uh, you see in, on the right-hand side here. The uh, data can also be depicted in, in horizontal slides. Uh, you see the, uh, the, uh, the slice on the top here, Correspond to the level that you see on the map to the to the top right, also depicted in the in the in the bottom um, section. You you notice the uh, the uh, the high resistivity at the top, uh, showing that the uh, that the uh, moraine clay is not uh, fully continuous at the, at this part, um, and also uh, it, it it comes very close to the to the surface at the, at this part. Uh, this area here corresponds to 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 this you see in the uh, in, in the map uh, to the right. Moving a little bit downwards, um, we are in in this panel down. You see we are actually touching the the, the aquifer and that refers to 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 this area up here. And moving uh, towards the uh, the northeast, we see the low resistivity part in this part corresponds to this uh, moraine clay la uh, layer on top of the primary. Uh, aquifer in this part. Uh, moving further downwards, uh, you notice that the aquifer sort of dips, um, uh, seen in the uh, in in the bottom slide. That that this this uh, area is a little bit lower than the part, and also this corresponds to the resistivity distribution you see on the map uh, to the right. Moving even um, further down. Uh, now at this level, that's uh, 20 to 25 meters below uh, sea level. Uh, you see that the uh, primary aquifer now narrows in, and uh, actually it's very, very uh, narrow structures uh, at, at, at this depth. 
So in this step, it's actually possible to to very very clearly narrow in the uh, the, uh, the limitations of the uh, of the aquifer. Another way of looking at the these uh, geophysical data is to uh, calculate um, uh, clay thicknesses based on the uh, uh, correspondence between the uh, the sediments that we've seen uh, in the in in the boreholes and the resistivity uh, values that we measure with with the TTEM. So we uh, ex uh, establish a correlation between the uh, the clay uh, as described in the boreholes and the resistivity that we see in the in the measurements. From this relation, we can calculate uh, how how the uh, how thick and accumulated uh, clay would look like from from uh, from the top and and from the top of the uh, of the primary aquifer. Um, from from this map, it's very obvious that. Uh, that in these parts we have very very uh, thin clay thickness above the uh, of the aquifer, whereas in, in the uh, southeast and uh, south uh, and northwest uh, of of the aquifer, that's actually a quite uh, thick um, clay layer. Uh, so focus on 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 protection this uh, this aquifer we will have to be on on areas where the clay thickness is uh, is is the least. Also, it's possible to uh, depict the results by by uh, cross-cutting uh, sections. Uh, you see these sections from the from the area very close to the production wells, and then moving down uh, uh, towards uh, southwest in in the area. In that sense, uh, it's it's uh, uh, you can visualize where where the aquifer is uh, delimited to uh, to to the site. Some uh, applications and related services. Uh, first of all, I would like to mention that uh, we use the, the TTM for mapping geology. That's the primary uh, purpose uh, that, that we use for, for which we will use this uh, method. Uh, our customers uh, cover a range of uh, commercial and governmental clients, uh, and the uh, prim some of the uh, applications looks like uh, mapping groundwater aquifers and their vulnerability. Um, and the service we, we provide is a threat and risk assessment, uh, uh, designate new well sites and draw up uh, protection plans for established uh, well sites. Um, mapping, close ge mapping geology close to waste deposits or con contaminated sites. Um, we uh, offer risk and impact assessment surrounding uh, the environment and including uh, the, uh, the uh, groundwater resources uh, um, in, in, in those areas. Uh, also, we use the method for mapping clay mineral deposits and aggregate materials such as uh, sand and gravel. Uh, and the services uh, covers the designation and volume calculation of clays and, and aggregates. Um, mapping geology uh, for uh, environmental impact assessment prior to large infrastructures are also projects for which we use this, uh, this method. And this uh, covers my my description of uh, of the TTM method and and how we use it in projects in in Denmark. And uh, now I'm I'm open to to questions. Um, please write them in the chat if you have some questions um, uh, for regarding the presentation or or the the, the method in general. And uh, they will be read to me from from the host. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Anders, for your presentation. So you, again, you can log your questions like uh, Anders just uh, mentioned in the question box and also the presentation is available to download in the handout box. I will start with the first question. How does resolution and maximum depth of investigation compare to conventional resistivi resistivity profiling? Uh, yes, um, I mean resistivity is a is a method that's been used for for several years, and and, and that's a question that we often meet when we propose a, a TTEM uh, survey. Um, compared to uh, to ERT, um, uh, TTEM is 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 very good as and in, in mapping uh, conductive levels, whereas uh, levels in with uh, with 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 the high resistivities uh, they are less good in resolving those. Um, ERT has a slightly better resolution in the top, maybe 10 to 15 meters, uh, especially for, for resistive structures. However, 
uh, mapping um, conductive structures, uh, the TTEM is, uh, is most superior. Uh, with respect to depth of investigation, um, it's, it's about the same. When you use uh, ERT and have a five minute meet, meter separation of, of electrodes and a spread of uh, 400 meters, you achieve something like 80, 70 to 80 meters uh, depth of uh, penetration, little depending on, on, the, um, on the, uh, how, how, how you d distribute your, your measurements. Uh, but that's, that's equivalent to the TTIM. Uh, if it's very uh, conductive um, structures, the TTIM will see uh, even deeper, but it's, it's comparative. Yeah. Thank you. How will this ge geophysical model assist in managing and developing groundwater resources? Um, I guess it's more or less covered in the presentation. I mean, with the with, with the TTEM, we 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 map the uh, delineation and the uh, the protection of the of the aquifers, uh, and in that way you can you can uh, specify the, uh, the the protection measures that you want to to oppose uh, to protect these uh, um, uh, these aquifers, uh, and you can also calculate the uh, the volume and and uh, um, and uh, borders of the uh, of, of of the aquifers. Yeah. Sorry, I was on mute. Thank you. We have another question um, from from the audience. Um, have you had any success using TTEM to identify crustic, for example, void and internal bedrock, uh, what would you, your recommendation be considering uh, utilizing um, TTEM in this application? And in cast environments and in, uh, in identifying voids, it's, uh, it's a very hard target for TTEM because they often show up as high resistive, uh, resistive targets. Uh, so what will normally be, uh, be seen is that if it's, um, if it's filled up with uh, with uh, saline water, it can be uh, distinguishable from 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 the sites. But if it's uh, just a void and it's uh, air filled, um, it will probably show up with a little higher resistivity. But it's not uh, it's, it's not a primary target for 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 this system. Thank you. Another question here: Can this uh, method be used underwater? Not underwater. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't. Uh, Implies that um, the, uh, the 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 system is okay uh, used in in the rain, uh, but it has to be in captured in in a, in in a um, in a very uh, tight box if it's to used underwater. Uh, so f as 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 of now, it's not designed for that. Uh, I guess you can post that to the uh, to the manufacturer if you want to have a specific. Uh, um, use uh, underwater but uh, afloat on top of the water um, it's possible yes certainly thank you how many hectares have you mapped in total i assume this question is for in general or for this project if you can just uh, for, for um, this project I, I mentioned it was a little more than 400 um, 400 hectares 475 as i remember uh, i think as a total since 2020 it sums up to uh, more than 10,000 hectares um, how the exact number I cannot, uh, but it's more than 10,000, yes. Thank you. Uh, what methods do you use to compare the lithology uh, to the res resistivity at the site? Does this change dependent on geology at sites? Well, uh, we use whatever whatever information on the site that is uh, accessible. Uh, we prefer uh, we prefer boreholes uh, with, a, with a very um, a detailed ge geological description of uh, of the layers, and preferably also with the ge geophysical logs. But if that's not um, if not not accessible, we look for anything else. I mean, uh, general ge geological description of uh, of the area, and then I would emphasize that uh, that these are uh, in indirect um, uh, interpretations. If if they cannot be compared with boreholes, then uh, I I would. Uh, uh, I would I would emphasize that the uh, borehole should be made, and then the uh, the the, uh, the interpretation should be redone when once the uh, the actual geology is known. Thank you. How high is the transmitted current in the transmitter loop, and how does this affect the depth of uh, penetration? Yes. Um, 
I just covered it. We actually uh, we actually transmit the two uh, two currents in the transmitter loop. Uh, the high highest current is 30 amps, and the lowest current is uh, three amps. With the uh, with the high current, uh, the what we call the high moment, uh, uh, we are able to see uh, the, the the deeper parts. And uh, with the with the low uh, transmitted um, uh, current, uh, it's it's we uh, we achieve the uh, good resolution of the of, of, of the top part. Um, but this uh, system right now is not possible to to increase the uh, the, the transmitted current. Uh, so in areas with uh, with uh, with high disturbances at, uh, and uh, natural noise, um, we, we we just uh, uh, drive slower and and by stacking we can ease in, increase the depth of penetration penetration thank you lots of questions coming through um another one is how is it, the system different from uh, gpr technology our gpr is it's very very different uh it's it's uh, this this method is uh, it, it, it electromagnetic and it uh, works by inducing currents in the subsurface whereas uh, the gpr uh, transmit the uh, uh, sort of radio waves, and they again reflected from 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 boundaries uh, at, uh, at uh, in, in in depth. So it's uh, two very very different uh, techniques. Uh, this uh, the TTM can see down to what I mentioned, uh, 80 meters of, of depth. Whereas a ground penetrating radar, depending on on frequency, doesn't look any further than about 30 to 40 meters. Thank you. Um... Does the TTEM system have capabilities in identifying and mapping buried pipe and conduit? Uh, the very easy question. It's a very easy question to uh, to answer because the answer is no. Um, uh, metallic structures uh, such as uh, cables and and uh, and fences uh, on on top, but especially buried cables, uh, they uh, they pose an interference in, on the signals. And uh, normally we just uh, remove those data. That has been um, has been uh, in, uh, interfered by by buried cables. Of course, when removing the data, you can you you can see where where it's actually positioned in the ground. But uh, saying something about depth and and uh, and uh, type of cables is not possible. Only that they interfere with the uh, with the signals. Thank you. I will take the last question. Um, does the speed of the ATV have any effect, and uh, why you're not basically driving faster? Uh, yes, it has a. It sure has an effect on the uh, on the data quality. Um, uh, you can you can drive faster. The ATV can go even uh, faster, maybe up to 40 or 50 kilometers an hour. However, that will uh, that that would decrease the, uh, the 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 data quality significantly. Um, we we measure in time, so. Um, at each position along the uh, the profile, you will get more data when driving uh, slowly, and uh, vice versa. You you get a less density of data if you if you drive very fast. We have reached this uh, compromise at driving about 15 kilometers an hour, which normally will give you a good uh, data quality and and a good amount of data in in your stack. However, we tend to uh, to drive slower if we uh, if we experience uh, high no high noises in the in the areas. Perfect, thank you. Uh, so we're at the end of our webinar session. Uh, thank you, Anders, for a fantastic presentation. Uh, please feel free to follow up directly with Anders via the contact details shown on the screen. And I would like to thank all attendees for joining today. Thank you very much for your time. Also, thank you for me.